Welcome to my video channel. Today we will talk about billiards and how we can apply mathematics uh, to billiards to predict some uh, some stuff as like angles. So, uh, what do we have as usual? Uh, well, this is about a short pair in billiards. Well, we have two balls. Ball we strike and ball uh, that that is stroken by the first ball. It goes somewhere. So this is some kind of uh, conditions when we have some not large gap between balls. The gap uh, is for example less than 3R radius R. Okay, so this is situations we will talk about today uh, and uh, what usually we do in billiards? So, as again, we have two balls, two balls, and we strike with our billiards cue. This ball, it goes somewhere here. It strikes this ball. So, how it happens? We can imagine where our ball goes so we see it strikes it in this point and this ball goes perpendicularly uh, it goes along uh, along the trajectory which is perpendicular to this line okay so uh, where is the profit and what should we see in this game? What should we imagine? We should Im imagine these lines, of course, this line and this line and the angle between these lines. At least we can look at this angle large angle it doesn't matter so these lines are useful in the game but what do i suggest you today uh, let's to uh, let's uh, turn back to this situation uh, i will draw it again now well we have ball number one the ball number two, okay, and now I suggest to imagine the line that goes through the centers of the balls, okay, and uh, well, 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 uh, we strike this ball with our billiards cue it goes somewhere here here okay uh, it strikes this ball and this ball goes somewhere there uh, and uh, what we see now we see the triangle okay common type of triangle we see right now well uh, let's call this side of triangle a and we can introduce a vector a with the origin in this point okay uh, in this way we can introduce uh, the vector b uh, this is this vector with the same origin point. Well, we can introduce the 
uh, side of triangle C C this is the last side of triangle that we have uh, and let's introduce the angles well we have an angle alpha and we as a result we we have oh my god everything falls okay we can continue maybe yes we can definitely continue the investigation well as a result we have a better angle so we have some sort of the line we have two angles and uh, well, what is the task here so uh, there is definitely some function well um, we have alpha and the gap between the balls the gap is G of course uh, and uh, we have function of alpha and the gap so we can compute better okay well uh, in opposite way we can compute maybe another f function of beta and g we can compute alpha okay uh, well it would be useful function to achieve uh, and we will try to do it so let's do it right now uh, as I introduced this site C we can try to compute this site of triangle what is it uh, well C squared is equal to scalar product between uh, A minus B and A minus B what we have here uh, A square plus B square minus double uh, scalar product AB and we definitely know we definitely know what is it it is uh, a b cosine beta okay so as soon we know what this side is what the length of this side we can try to relate these angles with each other uh, let's try to do it and we can apply here uh, sinus theorem this uh, theorem is about um, relationships uh, between or it is about proportion between uh, an angles uh, sinus of angles in the triangle and lengths of opposite sides this proportion is uh, equal for every one. Well, uh, look how it looks. Uh, sine beta uh, over uh, C is equal to sine alpha. And we have here the opposite side, the lengths. Uh, a okay uh, but we know the c square so we can uh, do some stuff with this equation uh, and uh, and uh, what we know uh, what a a is to r to r but I suggest you to uh, normalize every length uh, in this situation uh, normalize it by air so I suggest you to uh, I suggest you to 
divide everything in this way. So we have here two. It is two radians. It is length that is computed in radians. It is normalized lengths. It is very convenient in this task, so uh, we remove this, this, we can remove what? We can remove this, and we can see that it is equal one. Okay, and we can remove even it. Okay, uh, so we, su we successfully removed R. Oh my god. Ah. It doesn't exist anymore. Okay? Very convenient way. So, what we can do with this stuff? Oh, uh, let's try to do it. We will try to do this way. So, sign beta and A. So, we have uh, for sine square beta is equal uh, c square but c square is this stuff let's uh, do it so a square plus b square minus 2 uh, cosine beta uh, a b Okay, and uh, and uh, sine alpha squared. Well, we have separated alpha. It means we can achieve the function, this function. Let's try to do it. Well. Alpha is equal to arc sine of what? Of uh, well, to sine beta uh, about uh, square root of this stuff, and we know what a square is it is uh, 4 plus and we know what B is so B is our gap plus 2 because we have here 1 and 2 okay so plus B square it means plus 4 plus 4g plus g square and minus this stuff minus double a b so a is 2 and finally b plus 2 plus g cosine beta So we achieved the formula number one. Right now we have this formula. Right now we uh, having beta, we always can compute alpha. Uh, otherwise we can use computer and we can uh, using this formula, we can compute something like this stuff. Uh, it is the task to achieve it, but we cannot to do it because because of many beta in this expression. It is not easy, of course. Uh, well, so uh, using uh, Python, I can uh, achieve uh, some plots. Uh, Plots, it would be very useful maybe to have these plots. And uh, it may be the purpose of my the next video I can make the, the next time. Uh, but it is not over because the most interesting in, in this 
computation uh, it is um, to find uh, when this formula is restricted because it doesn't work in some situation let's imagine this situation so we can strike this ball under mm, some angle which will be more than some alpha zero for example this angle okay we strike it it and it goes somewhere and it doesn't interact with the ball number two so this formula doesn't work anymore okay uh, how to find uh, this uh, radical situation we can find it uh, from the picture we have here we can draw the line some line you see uh, the point some point it is the last point uh, on this uh, ball uh, where the first ball can to interact with the second ball uh, because it cannot interact with this ball for example uh, in this point okay so let's find this situation and what I can say about it uh, you really can to find this stuff this line how so if you will look uh, in this picture you can exactly say that uh, there are some beta that will change rapidly but alpha will not change uh, so maybe you can see it maybe not but uh, to have this picture it is enough to see that this radical situation is about when we uh, have a derivative alpha by beta and we have zero so it is the most interesting because we really can see it from this picture okay and so having this equation we can find the situation we can find beta zero from this equation okay so let's turn back to our equation number one uh, using the differential equation this uh, we can find beta zero and so we have the limits for our formula number one uh, so when beta is less than beta zero we can really use this formula and how we can to differentiate this by beta and to equal everything to zero so it is easily we try to uh, to achieve the derivative of arc sine uh, but uh, it cannot give us the zero so we uh, continue to achieve derivative uh, or differentiate maybe uh, my English is not good too much so we uh, differentiate the ratio and this is when it is really useful so we can remove two because it is not about uh, this equation so let's uh, differentiate uh, this stuff well what do we have uh, cosine beta divided by uh, root square minus uh, the half sine beta and right now we have this expression uh, under the brackets in the free uh, 3 over 2 degree okay and it all is equal to 0 
So right now we can find beta zero. Well, we can simplify this expression in this way. Look, it is simple. And this expression we finally can put here. So 8 plus 4g plus g square minus 4 2 plus g cosine beta um, is equal, I see it, uh, sine beta. So it is, equa it is equation where we can find beta zero. Okay. Uh, oh, I have lost uh, something, yes, and it is cosine beta zero. Well, this is a question, so we can find beta zero, and we finally can say when this equation number one really works. Or not a question, but, uh, but the formula, of course. So, uh, the next step of my video series uh, in billiards game, I can demonstrate what uh, graphics we can uh, achieve from this formula, and uh, maybe I will find some cases when these uh, graphs really, really useful for the practice. Okay, so thank you very much for you were watching this video. Goodbye.